So how did Carlos Alcaraz dominate Alexander Zverev? Well, in my opinion, it comes down to three main reasons. Number one, the serving. Number two, the positioning. And number three, I'm gonna keep that one a secret, just to make sure you stick around all the way to the end because it's a very important reason to understand in how he beat him. Well, reason number one is the actual serving. Before we talk about the serving, let's quickly talk about the actual game styles of both players. Now, Zverev, I would consider him more of a counter-puncher kind, pl kind of player. Now, even though he can be aggressive with his ground strokes and he does have quite big, heavy ground strokes, he mainly relies on his first serve as a weapon to win a lot of free points. And then re he relies on the consistency of his ground strokes. So I would consider a counter-puncher because he's very comfortable moving behind the baseline or moving around the baseline. So he's very comfortable with that lateral movement and that's where his comfort zone lies. Now, occasionally he comes forward, but his true sweet spot is really behind the baseline in that lateral movement, being consistent and dominating from the baseline. Now, Alcaraz, on the other hand, he is an all-court player. Now, he's comfortable moving laterally along the baseline. He's, he does have those big, heavy ground strokes to dominate rallies from back there, but he's also very comfortable mixing in variety. We've seen him use some of those angles really well. We know he loves hitting those drop shots, um, but he's also really comfortable moving forward and finishing at the net. So he does have a lot of variety, which is why he is an all-court player, and he is able to adapt to different kinds of playing styles. So now that we understand the different kinds of playing styles, we also have to understand what their intentions were. Well, the game plan for Zverev, I think, is kind of simple. Um, in the last two times that, that Zverev played Alcaraz, he mainly relied on his big serve and I, I will mention this though, the last two meetings were on hard court. So having that fast first serve does make it does make it a little bit more challenging for the returner to get balls in play. So besides that first serve though, Zverev wanted to outlast and just be more consistent and basically force errors from Alcaraz by just outlasting him from the baseline. Whatever Alcaraz though wanted to do is slightly different. So Alcaraz, for him the game plan against players like this should be pretty straightforward. Number one, you want to get them out of their comfort zone. So you want to try and get them out of the zone. And we saw him do this quite often. And this is where I thought he would use the drop shot a whole lot more, and he did. So he continuously found opportunities to use that and throw in more drop shots. I'm gonna get into a little more detail in just a second here, but that was the game plan. Just getting Zverev out of that position, getting him out of the comfort zone, and make Zverev less comfortable. Now. Talking about the serving though, Alcaraz did a really good job, Zverev did an absolutely horrible job in the match. Now we know Zverev has a very, very big first serve and I saw some numbers um, today and they showed that Zverev, the difference between the Zverev first and second serve uh, yesterday in the semifinal match were 50 miles an hour. So his average first serve was 50 miles an hour faster than his second serve. That, that difference is a little big. But we know that Zverev does occasionally struggle with the consistency on his second serve. And we know that he's known for those double faults. However, the troublesome numbers come in for Zverev that he only won about a little over 60% of, of his first serve points. And in the 30s, about 30% of his second serve points. And those numbers are not good, especially not for that first serve. But throwing the, the Alcaraz serve really makes, uh, makes you understand that Zverev didn't really have a good chance to break. In fact, Alcaraz did a really good job of dominating early on the serve. And he won uh, more than 80% of the points of his on his first serve and about 60-some percent of the points on his second serve. Now, those numbers are very good. That means um, Alcaraz was almost as successful winning second serve points as Zverev was with his first serve. So that, that just shows you how well Alcaraz returned how badly Zverev served, and how well Alcaraz actually served. But after we talk about the serving, we have to talk about the second part, and you know that's the positioning. And I hinted at that a little bit earlier, but when you're somebody like Zverev, you know that your sweet spot is staying behind the baseline. If you're playing somebody like Zverev, though, you know you have to do your best trying to get them out of that. Because I, on an average day, I would say Zverev is going to be very, very tough to beat in a baseline and baseline exchange, because that's what he wants to do. That's his entire game plan, and that's his strength. 
So if you're playing something like that, you don't want to play on their terms, which means that's an opportunity for Alcaraz to do three main things. And we saw him doing this quite a bit. Number one, throwing those drop shots by exploiting the fact that Zverev is so far back on the court. Number two, actually staying close to the baseline so that way when Alcaraz hits those shots, he can actually use more angles and um, take more time away from Zverev. So again, this player, the baseline or the, uh, the counter punch here, is very comfortable with this lateral movement and is very comfortable when they have time to set up. However, we don't want to give them that time. We want to play on the, closer to that baseline so that we can rush them more on their shots and we can exploit more angles. Because again, we want to break this play and that can mean moving them in by using the angles or as I mentioned in the first point here, try and actually draw them in with those drop shots. But the third thing is you actually want to try and come to the net a whole lot more. And again, this goes to you want to rush your opponent, you want to exploit that, 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 uh, that they're that far back, and that way it makes it a little bit easier to either use the drop boy, which Alcaraz did actually quite a bit, or it makes it easier for you to actually use those sharp angles. So if you're playing a counter puncher who is very comfortable with this lateral movement, you want to do whatever you can to get them out of this comfort zone. You want to get them out of the trenches back here. Now here is an excellent angle, an example of the Zverev positioning and how Alcaraz frequently exploited that. So just a great example of how to exploit somebody's positioning when they're that far back in the court. And just take a look at this. Now take a look at where Zverev is hitting. You can see he's out of frame when he's hitting that forehand. But even as he's recovering, as he's split stepping, just take a look at how far behind the baseline he actually is. Um, hard to tell for sure, but it's probably 15 to 20 feet behind the baseline. And as a result, he has a long distance to run down that drop shot. So we're talking, he has to probably run 40, 50 feet or so, at least to run that drop shot down. And just that positioning is so key in understanding how to actually beat somebody who loves being so far behind the baseline, who's so comfortable with that lateral movement. But if you bring them out of that comfort zone, if you bring them out of the trenches back there and draw them in, that can be such an effective play. Now, so that's that's what Alcaraz's game uh, game style was, or his game plan was, and he executed that to perfection. So using the Zverev positioning and using the drop shot and the short court is absolutely what helped him dominate Zverev. Now, the third thing though, and before I get to that third thing, you should consider like, hitting like and subscribe if you gained value from this, or if you found this interesting, and maybe check out some of the other videos on my channel that are gonna be guaranteed to help you level up your game. Now, the third reason why Alcaraz absolutely dominated Zverev is the firepower. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Zverev is very comfortable back here. And so hitting through somebody like that is not super easy. But if you're on fire and if you're in the zone like Alcaraz has been the last few weeks, it's definitely a lot more possible that you can get away with it. So the fact that Alcaraz has a huge amount of firepower is part of how he set up his movements forward. Because he came to the net quite a bit. And as I mentioned, players like Zverev are comfortable back here with that lateral movement. And normally when you give them time, meaning when you try to hit those powerful shots from back here, it's very tough to really hit through players like that. And Alcaraz didn't really try too much of that. He didn't just try to hit through him from back here. But like I said, you want to play close to baseline, which he did, and then exploit some of those angles to try and move them off this plane. So firepower is only half the equation because he does have the, the firepower to get Zverev moving and get him in trouble. But then he has the variety and the arsenal to actually finish the point. And that is in terms of moving forward and using that drop shot. So the firepower of Alcaraz to set up opportunities to move forward and to set up opportunities to finish is absolutely crucial in understanding how he won. Now here is a great example of the firepower that Alcaraz possesses. So just take a look at how he's able to generate so much power and hit through somebody like Zverev. And Zverev is very good again at the whole lateral movement part, so he's very good at defending behind the baseline. But as I just mentioned, when you're trying to be aggressive, you want to try and actually take that ball earlier. So just take a look at one of these last shots. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell, but Alcaraz here, if we zoom in a little bit, it looks like he's right around the baseline. And that's exactly what you want to do. You want to try and take time away. 
Because what it does is it takes time away from your opponent's recovery. When they're further back in the court, they have less time to recover and less time to get in a good position to defend their court. So as you can see here, now by the time Alcaraz makes contact, Zverev is still very much on the outside of the court. And now as a result, which part is right wide open? You're right, the down the line part is wide open. Let me put that in a different color. So there's a big target in the open court, and as a result, because Alcaraz takes time away, and because Alcaraz has the firepower, now he also exploits that, and as a result, Zverev is caught with a very, very, very defensive shot and a very weak shot where Alcaraz, again, can move forward, step inside the court here, and attack and hit past Zverev. Now, if you want to watch more videos from Carlos Alcaraz, check out this video of his forehand or check out this video to learn how he beat world number one Novak Djokovic yesterday.